Um, we're about to uh, to meet a man, if you haven't met him already, uh, who last year passed five million air miles, um, which is a fair old way to go, to be fair, in anybody's lifetime. Uh, has had a series of successful marriages. In all fairness, two 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 wives. Yeah. Two hundred and twenty-two. Uh, four children. Six grandchildren. One on the way, another one on the way in January, and a great grandchild as well. Correct. That's a pretty good game. Uh, his current business has been close uh, close to the wire uh, twice over the twenty-one years that it's been trading. Uh, this man has written his own paycheck for 26 out of the 46 years that he has been uh, in commercial life. Uh, for the other 20 years, he worked for one Dutch multinational, two major hotel and resort companies, one UK and one USA stroke Canada, and UK engineering group operating in the Middle East. Uh, he's visited 56 countries in his uh, illustrious career so far, and his favourite out of the 56 is probably... Quite Qatar, uh, which is in the Arabian Gulf, and he has just been appointed as the non-executive chairman of the Fershall Group, who are uh, engineering up north. Uh, one other thing that you might not know about David Smallman, uh, something that is written down here, but an interesting little tidbit uh, that I managed to grab from Mrs. Smallman. Um, <laughs> which Mrs. Smallman? <laughs> this is the first one. Uh, uh, is that, is, this is nothing to do with her, apparently. Uh, but at the age 17, David actually broke his neck and survived. Um, but that, uh, I will just clarify, was nothing to do with his first boy. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, David Smallman. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. So, sorry about the microphones, but we explained that a little earlier so that we can uh, video this so you can uh, distribute it around uh, later on. So, um, the whole point of today is for you to ask me questions to talk about things that bother you or concerns you have about your businesses that I might be able to make some insights on or give some suggestions on. So, I'm really the floor is yours. So, who's going to be first? Yeah, yes, Richard, I'm going to come around with the microphones. Give me a. So this is Gareth from yeah. Business Continuity. Yeah, David, you've worked a lot with small businesses. Uh, if you had to choose one aspect of small businesses that tends to get them into trouble the most, what would it be? Huh. How long have we got? <laughs> <coughs> wow. Trust you to go straight to the heart of it. Um, the number one, the number one thing that most small businesses get wrong is the amount of time that they spend doing the three main things that you have to do in a business. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll try and go through this with you quickly, all right, and then we can develop some discussions as we go along. I put it like this, you, 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 you market stuff, you make or deliver whatever that service might be in the case of a country you're delivering something and you manage. Everybody agree there are three basic things that you're going to get up to every day? These are what I think are the right percentages for managing any business, any business. Right? And one of the reasons why I've taken on the non-exec chairmanship of the Fershall Group is because this bit I'm about to explain to you is out of whack. That's a seven and a half million pound a year business. This bit is out of whack in businesses which turn over £75,000 a year. All right? So, I think you should only manage your business for 10% of the time. And if you're doing more than 10%, we'll come back to that because you've got a problem. I think you make or deliver what you're doing 35% of the time. And you market your business 55% of the time. Now let's make an assumption. Those of us in this room, and there's everybody in this room, from what I can hear from so far today, we've packed one except two exceptions. We write our own paychecks. That means most of us work long hours. I reckon the average in this room for a week's work is probably 60 hours. Anybody want to disagree with that? 
Some of you are going to say, yeah, it's probably 80. <laughs> but I'm about 60 hours. So if you um, split that up, um, let me just uh, hold on a second. If you split that up, and I'm going to try and stay with the same percentages, all right, because I think the, the percentages work whichever way you go on this deal. Right. Um, that would give you 33 hours doing the marketing bit, correct? 12 hours doing the make, deliver bit, and three hours doing that bit. I want to come back to this piece, if I may. In all seriousness, if you're spending more than that on managing your business, however small or however big it is, you're doing one of two things. One, because it's your business and nobody can tell you not to do it, you may be simply shuffling paper and doing make work things to ensure that you don't have to do one of the top two. Because the easiest thing you can do in, an, in your own business is do this bit. Because there's nobody else but you to tell you how much time you need to spend doing that. Because there's nobody there to discipline you, except yourself. And we know, don't we folks, that in a, an ascending order of difficulty, it goes like that. Right? So, you've got 33 hours out of your 60, 12 hours, and 3 hours. I doubt that there are many people in this room, otherwise you wouldn't be here tonight, who suffer too much from this bit. So if you don't, let me make a suggestion to you. If you go back and over the next two months you realise through a little bit of analysis, it's not difficult to do, it's a small spreadsheet on your, on your laptop, that those three hours are six or seven hours, you need to start finding ways of delegating. 